Want to know what the new Chaos Knights codex can do, but don't have a couple of hours to watch the video? I'll tell you everything you need to know in under five minutes. Overall, the codex looks really good and not overpowered, which is a nice change for GW. It is possible to build some killer combos though. Titanic feet have been nerfed and no longer multiply attacks. You need a special melee weapon now for that. Improvements to building and including knights in armies and including them as dreadblades makes it even easier. A rotate iron shields are now more expensive at 2 CP, but it still only makes an improvement for ranged attacks. Knight movement has generally been reduced and advance and charge has been removed. Some army wide rules. Titanic models count as 20 models on an objective. War dogs count as five, but are objective secured. There are two main classes for knights to choose from that give them buffs. There's the Iconoclast, which is plus one attack and plus one AP for the first round of combat. It's great for melee knights, but we'll need a special weapon to take the most advantage of this. Now Titanic feet have been nerfed. And the Infernal class, where you can get a demonic surge, you either take one mortal wound and get a random buff, or choose D3 mortal wounds and then you can choose. The buffs available are plus three inch to move, they can't be wounded on a roll of 1 to 3, so transhuman for knights, or plus 1 to wound on one weapon. The Harbingers of Dread, some cool abilities that for pure knight armies only. Like with Nurgle Contagion range, they have a Dread ability, which is a 12 inch range, and any enemy models within this area are affected by abilities, essentially nerfs them. Dread tests are a common mechanic in the Codex, you have to roll 2d6 against leadership, and if the roll is higher, then they fail and bad things can happen. But knights get cumulative turn-based abilities, and it does mean they get a total of 5 stacked abilities by the end of the game. In each turn you get a choice of up to 3 abilities from a table of 3 different types. There's a complex interaction between what you can actually choose based on where you are for your last turn, GW aren't going to make it easy on us. The category of buffs are Despair, which is mainly objective focused, Doom, mainly morale focused, or Darkness, mainly focused around defence. Some of the coolest abilities you get from this is you can force a unit to lose obsec, you can half charge distances against you, and you can have minus one to hit at anything over 12 inches. Overall, Darkness seems about the best. Warlord traits are a six in addition to the household ones, and probably the best one is Knight Diabolus, plus one attack and reroll hits of one. This is gonna be really good. Relics, 14 available in addition to the household ones. The best two, and I'm sure the ones that will get played most regularly. The Veil of Medregard, so four plus invun. And Twisted Mask, an existing Psyker can know one extra power, and they also get a plus one to cast. Just briefly mention Psykers, but Knights now get Psychic Powers, and the Warp Storm Discipline has six powers available, a really fun addition to the Knights' abilities. Probably the best two of the powers available, you've got Winds of the Warp for Warp Charge 6, gives a Knight a 5 plus Feel No Pain, but on a cast of 8+, plus, any War Dogs that are nearby also get a 6 plus Feel No Pain. And the Storm Malevolent for Warp Charge of 7, plus one to Wounded Melee, Favour of the Dark Gods, a really cool points-based upgrade system. It's only for certain model types and doesn't include Forge World, unfortunately. You get one per night and you can't use the same one twice. Along with the purchase buff, you get a Chaos Allegiance and a favoured ability, which is really powerful. That ability can then unlock depending on how many models you kill and how many wounds they have. There are some really good ones here, but probably the best you've got for Zeech, Pyrothrone. Priced differently because of the model type, but the buff is that the model becomes a Psyker and can cast and deny a power. This is really cool. And if you unlock the favoured ability for this one, you can reroll a Psychic Test per turn. Slanesh, Beguiling Majesty. The buff is minus one's hit and wound in melee. And the favoured ability is a six inch aura of minus one attack. That is going to devastate anyone trying to take out a knight in melee, which we all know is probably the best way to kill a knight. And for Pantheon Undivided, that's Bellicor's area, you get the Mark of the Dread Knight. The buff is a 6 plus feel no pain, but the favoured ability is a 5 plus feel no pain. And Blessing of the Dark Master, it turns off rerolls against you for hits, wounds or damage. And the favoured ability, if you unlock it, is hits of 1 to 3 always fail. Dread Households, there are 6 options available and each of them gives you a buff, Warlord, Trait, Relic and Stratagem. A super heavy auxiliary detachment now gets these abilities as well, which is really great. And picking two of the best, you've got the House Hepatrax. Um, for the buff, you get extra wounds depending on what type of mod you are. For an Aberrant, they get four extra wounds. The Warlord trait ignores modifiers to characteristics, hit, wound, damage, advance, and charges. That is ace. The Relic makes the Knight minus one to hit, and the Stratagem Warping presence for one CP. At the end of the fight phase, you can deal some extra mortal wounds. And the other one that people are probably going to take just as much is House Commentus. The buff allows you to reroll your Demonic Surge if you're taking a random selection, or if you take the D3 mortal wound option, you can actually pick two. So you can give yourself Transhuman an extra movement, for instance. The Relic is for when you're shooting anything that's under 18 inches away, you get an extra one in your VP. And the Strat and Circling Hounds for one CP essentially means that War Dogs in Strategic Reserve can return in turn one. And here's the rest for those that want to pause the video and have a read. Dreadblades. Instead of taking a household, your knight can be independent, but they don't get any iconoclasts or infernal abilities. They do receive a fell bond, and each knight has to take a different one. There's 15 options available, however there's really stiff competition from the actual households, so I'm not sure whether you're actually going to be bothered taking these. Probably the best one though is Merciless Tormentors. You can re-roll, hit some wounds of one for ranged for anything within 18 inches. Stratagems. 
There's loads available, and as I've said before, Advance and Charge is gone, and Rotate Iron Shields is now more expensive. Overall, though, there's nothing too broken. Some of the best ones you've got are your Unyielding Rage for 1 or 2 CP, it's minus 1 to damage in melee, but and it only costs 1 CP on Wardogs. Spiteful Demise for 1 to 3 CP, Auto Explode the Knight, Break the Lines for 1 CP, you get plus 1 to hit in melee, and Beseech the Dark Gods for 1 or 2 CP, you can get back up after being destroyed on 3 wounds. Excited anticipation to receive the new Chaos Knights box set, really can't wait. If you want to support the channel, then drop us a like, give us some comments, tell us what you think, and consider becoming a member. There's loads of perks, and really like to hear from you. So, I'll see you again soon. Bye.